Hi there, I'm going to go over how to create this nine objects of my isolation project using Photopea and I'm actually providing a template for this. Um, basically what you're going to do is open my template and change the font at the top to be whatever font you want. Maybe give it a drop shadow or something to help it stand out. Add your name in spring 2020 to the bottom. Change your background to kind of these clouds that you can create using a filter in Photopea and also in Photoshop. And then I already have nine squares. You're just going to place your nine images in, clipping mask each image into the appropriate square, and then add an inside layer style stroke to yours so that we get that box look there. And that's mostly what you have to do for this. So it's not too complicated. Um, a little time consuming if you're on a Chromebook, because as I was, it just takes forever to load pictures. Um, but in my classroom, they will um, create a blog post to submit this so that the nine objects in my isolation will be on the blog post as an extra large image. And then below it, an explanation of what those items are and how they reflect you during our self-isolation COVID time. Um, so mine is puzzles, Zoom, kitties, my Wii, my girls, meet, road trips, Netflix, and Scrabble. And you can go read that on your own if you are so inclined. But let's hop to it very quickly. I have shared this PSD file here, 9objects.psd. You're going to download that and put it on your Google Drive so that you can go into Photopea and open it. Here's what my finished one looks like. So you can see this was entirely done on a Chromebook using Photopea. Going to have a lot of layers going on here. And I'm not going to demonstrate the entire project because basically you do the same thing nine times. I am just going to go over a few of the pieces that you need to know. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a new document in Photopea. But you're going to do it by opening the one that I shared to you. So once you download the nine objects one, we're going to open mine and use mine as a template. So you're going to open it up. Um, if you haven't made a photo P folder, you know, you might want to do that just to make it easier to find things. Um, but here it is. So I'm going to open up the nine objects one. And here we go. Now you're going to need to change this font at the top. This was a font that was um, on the one that I opened. And when you click on it, it will go away because it's just a built in font. So you're going to want to change that to something that more reflects your personality. And then, of course, you'll want to come down to the bottom and add your name. And I would do that down low in your layer stack just so that you have that down out of the way. Meanwhile, you're gonna have a top row, a second row, and a third row. You're gonna have multiple rows and they all have boxes. I've already named the layers of the boxes so you know what is what. I would suggest when you're not using a series of these boxes to turn off that layer um, just so it's not in your way, so it's not bothering you, and so you're not accidentally doing stuff in the wrong place. I personally find it easiest to deal with these one row at a time. So once you've got your fonts taken care of and you know how to mo modify font, you know, click on that layer, grab your type tool, just double click in the box that already exists. Um, if you triple click, it should let you select all the words. And then, of course, you can go up here and search through the fonts. Um, and then, of course, at the bottom, same situation, you would. Um, and again, I'm. I'm not going to pick colors and all that stuff right now. Um, but to add the one at the bottom, you would take your type tool. You're going to click one time. Um, set it whatever size you want. Around 65 is probably going to be good. Put your name and spring 2020 down here at the bottom. It could be in the same font as the one at the top or not. Um, but those things need to be on here, at least for my class. Now we're on the top row, and I'm going to start placing in my images. So you've got top right, top middle, top left. I think it's easiest to click on the box that you're going to be putting the picture in. So let's say I want to put this one in the top right box. That's this one. So I'm going to go to File, Open and Place. And again, I made a project called Pics in my Photo P project folder on my Google Drive. And that's where when I got on my phone, I just hit the little share button on my phone and I made them put them in this folder. So let's say that I want to put this sleeping cat in this one. I'm going to hit Open. Okay, it's going to take a second, and then it's going to load. And this is what seemed to take the longest of everything in here, was just waiting on each of my pictures to load when I did it a minute ago. Um, so they're going to come in, and it always, it always automatically in Photopea scales it down to fit the screen um, because we're inserting them as placed objects. So hold Shift, and then click and pull from the corner. And I know this little guy is going to go into this box. So I've got to go with Shift now, and I'm just messing with him. 
I don't have to worry too much about the size at the moment, but I do need it to be bigger than the box. And I can reposition and then I can hold shift again here and pull again if I need to. Um, but I don't want it to ever get smaller than the box. Okay. I'm going to hit OK. Again, I already said, hey, this is going on the top right. So I'm just putting it right above the top right. And then all I've got to do is right click on Sleepy Pumpkin here and add the clipping mask. That's going to clipping mask O Pumpkin into the box. Now let's go ahead and zoom up on this a little bit just so you can see better what's happening. If I'm clicked on my pumpkin layer and I take my move tool, pumpkin is inside the layer mask. So as I move her around, she's moving around inside that box. And I can still put my transform controls on her if I needed to resize her a little bit. Okay. But she's actually fitting in there nicely. So I'm just going to turn those transforms off. And then I would just move to my next one. I'd go to my top middle. I'd go to file open and place. I just have to decide which one I want to use next. Let's say I'm going to use this clue one. I'm going to hit open. We're going to sit here and pause for a second. Take a drink of your coffee. Wait for your picture to load. Um, then once your picture loads. Again, we're going to zoom out so we can see it. Hold shift, pull from a corner. Don't make it smaller than the box. Remember, we can always make it smaller later. Okay, I'm going to hit my check mark button and then I'm going to control plus plus. Zoom up a little bit here so I can see what's happening. Remember, you can also use the hand tool um, and move it around if you need to scoot it down. Um, but I'm going to get back on my move tool. And then we have to clipping mask clue into the top middle. So remember it goes above, right click, clipping mask. And now clue is inside the top middle box. And while I'm clicked on clue, if I move this around, it's only moving the thing that's in the box. So if I move her up or down, she'll get too far out of the box, right? Okay, and that's basically the gist of it. You just repeat this process over and over and again, placing them above the proper layers and then clipping masking them in. And once you get them all placed, you need to then add a stroke on the inside of each of these boxes just so we get lines between them. So don't add them to the photo layers, okay? So the ones that have arrows that have clipping masks, we don't want to add them to those layers. We're going to add them to the ones that show with colors. So on my top right layer, I'm going to click the effects button, the layer styles button. And I'm going to add a stroke. And it's important when you do these that you use an inside stroke. It's going to automatically choose outside we're going to need to switch it to inside. And if you want to, here's where you would choose whatever color you like. I'm going to say maybe 10 to 15 would be good on these um, sizes here, but it's really up to you. So like say here, say I want to use eight for this one. And let's say I want it to be, maybe I want to use a black color. Now, if you use a certain color uh, for your text and you want to match it, just pay attention where it says hex, this color code, you can copy and paste that when you put your text in and then paste it in here so that you can make this match the text color. But I'm just using black and I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click this layer, go to layer style and copy. And what that does is it copies that inside eight black. So you don't have to go set it again. Then click on this one, right click, layer style, paste. Scroll down to the next one, click on top left, right click, layer style, paste. Real easy to do. You just have to get in there and do it. Okay. And that's basically it. And then you do the same thing on all the rest of these layers. And I would say, you know, again, close that top row down. I'm done with the top row. So then I would move on to the second row. And if you wanted to, you know, you could turn it all on at once and then deal with it and then copy and paste those layer styles again. And that's basically the gist of it. Okay, once you're finished with all that stuff and you've got your name on there, you've got this going on, the last thing you need to do before you export this is we're going to add a new layer right here next to the trash can. I'm going to call it clouds, just double click it to rename it and hit enter. And then under filter, there's this cool thing called render and clouds. And there's also difference clouds. You could play with either one and just undo. Um, but what it does is it creates a cloudy background based on the two colors that are set over here. So I have white and gray, but let's say I chose white and um, like a pinky color or purple or whatever that is. So whatever two colors you have over there is what it's going to use. Now I want to make sure I'm on the right layer. I'm on my clouds layer. If you're on any other layer, it will completely like replace whatever's on the layer. 
Okay, I'm going to click clouds, give it a second, and then it renders clouds. So it gives you kind of this little pattern, this little cloudy pattern. Um, and then like if I wanted to change my words to black, this would be fine. Um, the other thing you might want to consider is changing the opacity of this. If it's too dark, just pull that opacity back and that will let your underlying background color show. Now, my background color is white, but you know, if I would have had a different background color, let me take my paint bucket, which hides under the gradient tool. Let me take my paint bucket and um, set my background to say black. Okay, now I'm gonna click on my background layer and fill it. Well, maybe I have the wrong one, let's switch it. I can't ever tell which one of these are foreground and background on these. Oh yeah, that's right. It would be my top. It would be my top color because I'm filling it. Okay, there we go. And so now it fills it in with black, which you can see if I turn the clouds off, it's just straight black. Um, but whenever I pull the opacity back on clouds, it starts to let the black show through, which makes it look kind of purple. But like, notice as we keep going, we get kind of a different little look. So it's kind of up to you how you want to go about this. I think that actually looks kind of cool on this one. Um, so it's not just completely flat. We get a little bit of clouds and we get a little bit of the rest. So there you go. That's basically how to create this nine objects of my isolation grid using a template um, created using Photopea. Um, when you're finished, remember, as always, Photopea does not save automatically. So you're going to want to save as PSD, put a copy on your Google Drive in case you need to come back and open this back up to work on it later. Um, or if you're completely finished with it, I would still save as PSD, just so you have it in case something crazy happens. And then you're going to export it. Now in my class, we're going to be putting it on our blog. So we're going to want to export as a JPG because that's what we will insert it as on our blog post here like this. And that's basically it. So that's creating a grid assignment in Photopea. Have fun.